Mind Gap Podcast. Everybody. Welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And Doug, if you won the lottery today, what is the very first thing you'd buy? Uh, I'd put 50 wait, to 75% wait, wait. of it. Before you answer this. You got the questions. We got the answers. Oh. All you do is ask. Practical. 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 Practical Doug. Because there's no way that this question gets asked without Practical Doug coming out of the woodwork. 100%. So, I thought please, you were playing continue. Doug Hates Stuff all of a sudden. I'm like, I don't know where we're going with that. And I'm like, oh, all right, this is Ask Practical Doug. My bad. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. <clears throat> yes. Uh, 50 to 75% of it would go into a <laughs> low yield. Uh, I'm sorry, low risk, high yield, hopefully. Uh, just savings account. Like, just go to a place that's like, hey, 5%. Sure. Savings account. Just Guaranteed, dump, yeah. Dump that in there. <clears throat> Guess what? I'm living off that interest every month, baby. There like, you go. Bada bing with a pipe, you know? Like, that's it. Um, if I actually had to purchase something, again, it's like I go like, what debts can I pay off, you know? Mm-hmm. But you know what else I'd do? I'd be like, well, what's what's the interest on, this, on these debts that I have, right? Because do I have yeah. a locked-in rate that's actually pretty low? Because if so, like, you know, maybe hang on to it, maybe not. Otherwise, just fucking pay it off. You know, pay off my house. Definitely fucking would, pay off my car. Because why wouldn't you just pay them off though? It depends. Like how much you gotta look at the value of the money with that sort of stuff. Like obviously, you're paying interest on it, so you're paying more than what it is. What it is. But if the interest is like super duper low, like mm-hmm. if you get like a two percent or something like that on something, it's like you know, if you if we're talking just like I have a stupid amount of lottery money, that's like yeah, just fucking pay it off. But you know. If you've uh, you know taken out a loan and it's like you know hardly anything and I don't know something with credit, you know what? I'm not a financial advisor. Don't fucking don't fucking ask me. Don't ask me <laughs> I just shit. love watching you explain explain it away. I, I was like, if you have finite amount of resources, you're like, what do I pay off? It's like pay off the things that have the highest interest, right? Like, well, but yeah, exactly. but if we're talking like saying, we have lottery you just money want here, hundred million dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's like fucking get yeah, house paid off, done, car yeah. paid off, uh, any other debts paid off, so that you're like ah. Man, that'd be wild thinking that my house is paid off. That's right? crazy to think it's like done, you know, problem solved there. Yeah. Um, I guess what would I buy? What would I spend my money? I don't think it'd be anything extravagant, to be honest with you. I'd probably get a new computer. There um, you go. All right. Uh, fuck, I don't know. Like, what do I really want? <laughs> like, um. I don't know. I, I there's no like big thing that I'm looking. I'm not gonna build a fucking pool, you know. Like I'm not. You gonna, don't want to take care of a pool? What? No, no I don't want to take care. Like probably he's like get a lake house, but I'm like yeah, but now I have two properties, and who's gonna maintain that one when I'm not there? You know, like, and that's where Jill would have to wear me down on that one. Be like Doug, it's gonna be worth it. But like, how close is it? Because I don't want to have to drive three hours because if something we, goes wrong, you know, exactly, like, you know, all that sort of shit. Are we like, get, are we gonna use it? Are we really gonna go up there that often? Yeah, because it's like, well, now we got to drive up there. If it's like an right. hour away, that's one thing. If I'm going up to New Buffalo or something and I'm on the lake, all right, cool. Yeah. That's no big deal. We can make that happen. That's cool. You know, whatever. But also think about this. Then you're locking yourselves in. You're almost obligated to go to that thing. You can't, you're like, if there's another place you want to go to, you're like, ah, we could go there, but we bought this lake house. Shouldn't we be going there instead? Oh, no, we'll put it up on Airbnb, you know? <laughs> and make it. Make it make money, baby. Uh, making money, I guess. I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's just, there's nothing like off the top of my head. Because for me, the peace of mind is clearing out debts and then just having that sum there. And then they should be like, cool, um, we're going to live off of the interest of this massive amount of money. I like how that excites you. It does. That's the thing you get excited about. You know what that is? That's a fucking cheat code. It's It's a cheat code. We are like, it's a smart play, but it is so quintessentially your answer. And I love that. I love that. It's a cheat code to go, well, I don't have to worry about income. Right. Like, if you're smart and you're like, you dump that, you put that in something like whatever. I, I pour it into like uh, my my 401k sort of fund that I have, you know, sure. just put that in there with those with that stuff. And then take another percentage of that and be like, this is just going to go here. 
and just right. yield me some interest that's like so like it's fuck off and I go like great I get tens of thousands of dollars a month and just interest on something that I'm like great right. we're good hey Jill fucking quit your job hey, like hey Jill what do you want to do because we can do anything now right I can be like great Natalie's you know whatever education she wants to pursue like done we got it covered right. you know and essentially. We could retire if we wanted to, you know, sure. like, yeah, fucking great. I'd have to go to my financial advisor and be like, hey, man, uh, what do you suggest? Give me some thoughts. But yeah, as right. far as like making a, like a, a purchase on something, I'm like, I don't know, man, I'm fucking boring. I'm so boring. I hate cars. I don't want another one. Right. Um, I guess the, the, the biggest thing I could think, maybe some kitchen shit or something like that. I don't know. Like maybe sure. I get like one of those wood fire pizza ovens, you know? Maybe get a bigger smoker or something. I don't fucking know. Like, there's just not much I'd really want to do. How about you? I would. Well, one of the things that I would be, I'm surprised you didn't say is because you you had mentioned like get a new computer or something. But uh, I would I would assume that you'd sink some money into what about building out your own little studio for yourself? Yeah, that'd be fun. You know that'd what I mean? Like if you just like sink some like get some equipment, retro retrofit your room or mm -hmm. the downstairs and make it a complete like full on. It's like soundproof, like you could do whatever you wanted to do in their studio. There could be some like house stuff to do, like finish out our basement. Um, For me, that'd be what it would be. I would go, yeah. I would go house stuff immediately. And the, mm -hmm. the conversation that would be had, I'd, I would sit back down. I'd say, okay, are we sinking a couple hundred like into this and like, like really going, making this to the tits or are we moving, selling this one? And, <laughs> uh, you know, are we going to, are we going to find one? that used to be out of our price range, but now is well within that has everything ready to go. You know? Yeah. Like I'm sure that would come up. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm so reluctant to move. Like even in the same city, because I'm like, because that means we have like 11 elementary schools, like in our districts. That means like if we move out you of have our to make sure you're in the right one specific for area, yeah. then we are no longer in the same place where Nat goes to, you right. know, with all of it. And granted it all feeds up to, but I'm like, I don't know. Like, I love our neighbors. I love our neighborhood. Sure. Like, there's all yeah. that sort of stuff. I'm like, I'd be super reluctant to move yeah. out of where we are. And I was just like, yeah, we could just improve some things around here to be fine. So, yeah, I don't, I like that's, and that's the thing is like, what, what, you know, so I think that's where the conversation would come into play. I would absolutely, uh, without batting an eye, I would buy a condo in Chicago. Ah, interesting. I would buy a condo. I would, I would, get, I know enough people in there. Haig's looking for work. He's retired. You know, I can, <laughs> I can have him flip it, go over and just flip it whenever someone, so I'd rent it out, uh, Airbnb. And then whenever I want to, if yeah. ne or need to block off those dates, on, block off those dates. And then you got a, you got your own place, uh, real nice, real nice place, modest, but really nice. Yeah. You know, I'm not talking about the penthouse on Lake Lakeshore drive, you know? Sure. Um, but yeah, I, and then of course, I'd be calling a financial planner and a lawyer and saying, yeah. make this make money for me. Make my money work for me. I This is going to be a weird plug. Uh, but if you're listening to this and you don't have like a financial advisor, do yourself a favor and, and just find one. Like I <laughs> went to a website yeah. and like typed in my information and I started getting called by people, which wasn't really what I wanted. But I found a really good one. And through that and. Uh, they've been incredibly helpful for us in just because the thing was, I'm like, I think I'm doing this right, but I don't know for sure. And they've been instrumental in being like, hey, here's what you need to consider. Right. There's all these little things that they're experts in that they can yeah. help you with. And I, I know yeah. for a fact I'm not doing it right. And I know like I 100 percent know that I'm not doing it right. There's people out there who can who can who can tweak and turn different things inside the portfolio and make things work way smoother yeah. and, and, and optimize that. And that's, what was your vetting process like? This is going to get real nerdy and boring. No, folks. that's fine. So Cause I think this is, the, this is life stuff. In. Yeah. This is life stuff that I think you should all like, just, just consider wherever you are in your life, consider right. this right now, unless you are like an expert in financial planning, there's people out there that can help you. <clears throat> For me, it was just like, because you, um, you kept getting all these calls. So like, how did you sift through that? that so that I, I, slew of calls? I think I, I was given like three specifically were like delivered to me like, hey, these are three, these are three ones that you should look into. And I looked into them and I also was like, asked, I was like, came up with a list of questions like, how are you guys getting paid? Like, where, right. how do you get compensated for this? Because that's an important thing to know. Like, do I have to pay you a fee? Does it come out of something? And they basically have it structured where they take a percentage of however much essentially we have as like, our total. 
So and once we hit a certain threshold, it goes, you know, it goes up because it's sure. like, yeah. hey, you're, we're managing a lot more for you. Is it a percentage based off of how much, is it a percentage, percentage based off of what your, what, what's in there? If it yields, you know, gains, like if you get gains out of it, is it a percentage off the gains or is it a percentage off of, is it a monthly percentage off of whatever is just in there? It's a percentage off the total of, of their managing. So like, but like obviously, is, it a, is it a monthly percentage or is it it's, like It's a yearly, annual? it's an annual thing. Okay, got it, got so, it. So, okay. um, you know, so that, that was important. And then I was also like, what other services do you provide? They also do taxes. So that's where we started doing our taxes. That's fantastic. They, they help with estate planning as well, uh, as far as like, that's you know. key. That's yeah, those, those those kinds. Of, so there's like they have like there was a lot of stuff where I'm like, cool, I'm all in. This sounds really good to me, and uh, they've been great. Every time we have questions, we're just like, hey, we have questions about this. Can you help us out? And they're super yeah. helpful, and, and everything like that. And it's it's seriously like it will put your mind at ease knowing that you have someone. Because I also like if anyone has a 401k, do you ever like go in and actually like split out? That's like you have a hundred percent to use on these different funds. Do you just like do a generic one or do you break it out? You know? Are you asking like, me? Yeah. Like, Oh yeah. I, when I set my 401k up, it said, do you want high risk, medium or low risk? <laughs> and I just said medium. And so that's where it's at. I have no yeah. fucking clue how it's divvied up. No See, idea this guy whatsoever. went through, it was like, Hey, these are the funds we recommend. And these are the percentages. And so I went through and I, I very highly customized it and right. it's gone and really well. It's gone really that's well. What- that's what I'm saying is like, that's the kind of stuff where like someone who knows what they're doing can go in there and they can tweak and tinker and say, here's the little things that you can move around, turn this knob up, turn this one down. And it's like, ding, it's, it, it's yeah. more optimized. And, and you that, that. they, they send that. out regular communication too, like with whatever's going on in the world. They're yeah. like, Hey, this is what this is. This is what this means. Like, this is what you be, should be considering. That's like when fantastic. they're like, people are talking about a possible recession or they say the stock market just really shit the bed today. What does that mean for you and your investments? It's like, it's very reassuring. And it's like, right. it's, it's super helpful. They're, they really know what they're doing. And I like working with them. And it. it's something where you it's it feels intimidating. But I would say I highly recommend finding someone that can help you talk you through this stuff because time matters the most with this. If you spend years not optimizing it, that's like, that could be thousands, tens of thousands of dollars, possibly hundreds of thousands of dollars down the drain because right. you didn't optimize or do make a strategy early on because right. time and value of money. If you do it sooner right, and it compounds over time, you're going to make more. It's going to Absolutely. happen. It's going to be better. So yeah, it's not sexy, guys. It's not sexy, but take some time and do it. And you'll thank your future self will be like, thank you for taking care of our finances. Truly, truly, truly. Well, that's what I call an intro to the show. Hey, everybody, if you want to learn more about your financial planning and other fun stuff, uh, follow us, youtube.com slash mindgappodcast. Uh, hit the like and subscribe button. It's free and we appreciate it. Also, check the link in the description to links to our Discord, links to our merch, and links to our Patreon. We appreciate all of that. We really do. And we love you for doing that. So there, I said it. It's not creepy. It's love. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Is it financially responsible to get a second dog? (laughs) No. (laughs) You fucking asshole. No, it's not. But I have a guy. I got got another dog. I got another dog. Uh, Dougie got a new doggie. I got a puppy. Something I wasn't ready to do. Uh, Jill and Natalie have been uh, really bugging me for a while to get a second dog. And I'm like, practical Doug says no. And Jill always said, listen, I'll only do it when you're on board, but you have to understand this is not a practical decision to get another right. dog. And I'm like, right. understood. But the answer is still no. Can I can I tell you something? When you mm-hmm. guys came up and they like Loki was playing with Benny, mm-hmm. Jill Jill turned to Beth and I and goes, This is gonna help. <laughs> she goes, This is gonna help my argument. No. Something to that effect. I'm paraphrasing. Jill, if you're listening. For the record, for the was, record, I don't even fucking knew that. All right. I know that Loki, that was one of the big selling points of getting another dog go, is yeah. that Loki gets entertained by this dog. And for the record, it's been fucking awesome. Like, yeah, I was going to say, you, yeah, you had talked about how like you're not going to have to walk your dogs uh, for, for probably for two years. Like right. Loki <laughs> is fucking beat up every day. It's great. <laughs> Uh, but my sister-in-law got a dog, they got a puppy and it wasn't working out. And so she sent out a text to Jill and her older sister. It was like, Hey, I don't want to take this thing back to the shelter. Could either of you take this? And 
I was like, yeah, this poor guy. And it's, it's there's nothing wrong with him. He's right. fine. It's just like their family dynamic. It wasn't working. And so I was like, this guy doesn't need to, doesn't deserve to go back to the shelter. And I was like, we can do it. And I was like doing all the pros and cons. And I was like, it's true. This isn't a practical decision because this just means more logistical problems. It means more, it's a financial issue. You know, if we ever need yep. to board them, that's double the cost. It's more oh, yeah. food cost. It's more insurance cost. It's just more that, work, uh, all that, that sort of that stuff. Visits, yeah. Yeah. It's all that sort of stuff. But it's a good dog. It's a good fucking dog. They're like, it's the most chillest puppy I've ever had. His name's Bruno. And they said he's a border collie lab mix, but I think there might be some great Dane in there. I'm not fucking, I mean, you're, that, you're, his paws, you got his some paws big are paws. big, man. His dumps are big for a puppy. And I'm like, <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I don't know, man. But this is he's, just a uh, teaser. he's a cutie patootie and um, super chill, super snuggly. And that guy just like, I sat down and he just like popped in my lap. It was like, hey man, Love what that. are we doing? Right. I made the mistake of stretching with both he and Loki out today. And it was about 20 times worse than when I was at your place trying to stretch with Loki and Benny. Uh, it was, it was and they just were right on top of you. Just wrestling. WWE yep. just like, you know, Loki and, and Benny were kind of like around me. They were in, I was like trying to do all sorts of stuff. And I'm like, why did I even fucking bother with this? Right. Like they are just, and then Benny's a puppy. And he just starts biting me. He's biting whatever's around him because he's all riled up. And I'm like, why are you biting me? It was just like, it was a nightmare, Brutal. but it was funny at the same time. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been great. It's been fun. It's a lot because we're like, it's like, all right, we just gave him water. We got like, I don't know, 15 minutes. Watch him. Uh, get right. him outside. Everyone and set your watches. But then we go outside and then Loki and Benny play and then they're they're hot and then they need water and then the cycle continues and it's like hot as balls out right now, which makes it even worse. And it's just oh, like, it's God so damn warm. it. Yeah. So hot. So, but <laughs> when we got him, um, uh, we only got like, a t we got one serving of food for him. So okay. like he didn't have like hardly any puppy food left. So he got to eat that night, uh, but we didn't have any more food for him. And, to, and like, so we had to go, I was like, I'll go to PetSmart first thing in the morning to get him some more food. So I take Nally with me, which I thought would be fun, but also she got obsessed with all the animals there, which I was like, oh, you, they have all sorts of animals there. She's like, I want a ferret. I'm like, ah, I've been there. Don't do that. And then she got I obsessed with ferret. She got obsessed with parakeets. She's like, I want a parakeet. I'm like, listen, you just got a puppy kid. I was like, we're not doing this right now. And then she was like. Dad, when I'm older and more responsible, can I get a parakeet? I go, I don't know, maybe. Like, I I, I, just, I don't know. That's a, that's, a, that's future Doug's problem. But, like, right. we don't know anything about taking care of birds, okay? Right. It's a she's whole like, other but I could, She's thing. like, I could learn. I'm like, yeah, okay, we could learn. But, like, I'm not willing to do that right now. We just got a puppy. <laughs> like, we don't need a bird in here, too. Like, I think birds are cool, but I also don't think they're going to be as cool as you think they are. You know? Right. It's like they're going to be chirping all the goddamn time. You're like, I'm going to do cool things because I've seen cool videos with them. I'm like, maybe, maybe they'll fucking hate you. I don't know. Right. Like, there's just a lot. Okay. You so might we're get a not. Bird that's a dick. Yeah. We're not doing that right now. So anyway, uh, we go there. I'm just getting some food and I go to check out and I had a Bill Burr moment. And um, oh, no. I, I, I set the 30 pound bag of puppy food on the counter and the lady scans it and she goes, oh, uh, what's phone number? And I immediately like my butt clenches and I was like, why do you want my phone number? And I kind of reluctantly give it to her and she's like, oh, OK, I see you're not signed up for our rewards. Um, it's uh, it's completely free uh, name. First name. She didn't even ask. She's moved right. right into it. Right, right, right. And I had old Doug would have been like, D Doug, you know, and would have gone through the whole process and hated myself the whole time. Yeah. But I, I go, nah, we're not going to do that. <laughs> and she looks stunned. She's like, oh, well. Uh, you know, if, if, if anything's on sale, then you won't get, you know, you won't get the sale. I go, I'm cool with that. <laughs> That's fine. I, and you just did your grill. Like, yeah, made that, I, like go, it's I don't, like, I go, I don't no care. It's just one bag stuff. of food. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Cause what she doesn't know is like, I've been to PetSmart twice, two times. Where because we order our, we, we order our food through Chewy. We have a delivery. Ah, so gotcha, I'm like, gotcha. this is an gotcha. emergency situation. Right. I don't give I was a just shit. Gonna, I was just going to say like, hey, now that you have two dogs, take it from a guy who currently has two dogs. You're going to be going there a lot. But I didn't realize you had Chewy. So you guys are. Yeah. yeah. You, you like, got oh, your thing already set up. Yeah. I'm good. This episode of mine got brought to you by Chewy. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm like, no, I'm not fucking. 
no, get, eat my balls. I'm not doing that. I, 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 but it was like this weird tension between us for the rest of the right. transaction where I'm just like, I don't want to do this. Also, right. oh, you mean I get what? 10%, 20% off of some fucking product in here. And then you're going to take my information and fucking sell it for like a million times like right. that. Get fucked. I, I, I am so tired. And this, again, Bill Burr said this 10 years ago. Years ago I'm so yeah. tired of going to any place and either you have to like download an app and create a fucking login. Oh, yeah. To do something or like, you know, hey, we got this rewards thing you need to sign up for. Well, I'm like, I don't want to sign up for anything anymore. I have right. sign up fatigue. And when oh, I go I to a place, yeah. when I go to a place and the, and I, I know I'm not going to be back here that often, they're like, they try to give me the hard sell. Same thing happened at GameStop when I bought the Switch. It was like the okay. day after Christmas. I was like, we should get a Switch. And I went to the GameStop nearby <laughs> and I got a Switch and everything like that. And this guy's like, you want to sign up for rewards? And I was like, no. He's like, well, here's the thing. He starts listing out all those things. I go, hey, man, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm probably never going to come back here. And that's nothing against you guys. I just order my stuff online. I don't yeah. like going to stores in, in person. So like. You gave him a real justification. I was like, I just, it's just, it, I don't want to sign up for this stuff. It's going to be a pain in the ass. I'm not going to use it. And it's, it's yeah. not worth it to me. Cause he's like, but if I go, no, 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 there's no, but like, I'm not, I'm not going to be back here. And yeah. I haven't been back since I bought yeah. my switch. Like, I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. So. Save this. Be and I don't feel bad anymore about it because I'm like, I don't, I truly don't want this. Like, whereas I don't know, even three, four years ago, I've been like, Oh, okay. And I just feel like I have to get bullied into it. Now I'm like, I don't want it. I really don't. And this is what it means to get older is you start, yeah, oh, you absolutely. stop giving a shit. Absolutely. I, I had, I, I had a very similar, uh, uh, experience with a uh, pest control guy who just came around. Oh. So I had, you know, the old knock on the door and I was <sighs> like, who's, who's knocking on Anytime I get the doorbell rings or the door knocks, I'm just like, what? What's that? What, what well, not only that, your into? dogs go fucking crazy. And you're like, hey, oh, thanks yeah. for that. Thanks, thanks for, that. for that. Yeah. So I, I eek out and I, I was like, hey, like, and he didn't even say hi. He just stood there. I'm like, hey, what's up? And he's just like, hey, so I'm in the area doing, uh, you know, we're pest control, this and this. You know, we got a, a couple of clients, you know, uh, lies, John over here lies, and, and, lies, and, uh, all you know, lies. Ben. Sorry. Sorry. He's full <laughs> shit. Yeah. Yeah. John and Ben and this and this. And so, you know, with some of your neighbors, you know, uh, using our services, what we're doing right now is we're doing this thing, uh, 50% off, uh, you know, if you sign up for the service today and since we're out here, blah, 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 blah. And he gave me this hard pitch and I go, I said, yeah, I said, uh, I said, that's a great deal and everything. I said, but we're, we're, we're good. He goes, uh, he goes, cause our services, uh, are, you know, we, we, you know, ants, uh, you know, uh, Spiders, he, he listed off a whole bunch of whatever, like garden centipedes, you know, da, 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 da. He goes, you guys, you got any of those in your house? I said, yeah. I said, everyone does. <laughs> I said, everyone has those in their house. Like, yes. You got any blood under that skin? Huh? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And uh, he goes, so what do you, what do you do when you encounter them? I go, well, I kill them. <laughs> It's like, it's and I like put I'm, their bodies on display to let the others know. I put you've little been toothpicks warned. and I just I, I I pike them and I go look. Tell your friends. Tell yeah. tell your kin 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 folk. Yeah. And I go. Uh, I was like, we're. It's, I said it's not like we're over. And I said this to. Him, I go. It's not like we're overrun with them. I said I just when I encounter one, I kill it and I move on. And he goes, well, see, our we don't treat the in house. We treat the perimeter house. So you won't even be getting them in. And this and this. And I go. I said, look, I I appreciate it. I said I'm. We're good. I said, if we change our mind, we'll give you a call. Shouldn't have said that. I go, if we change our mind, we'll give you a call. He goes, well, here's the thing. If you change your mind and he went into this, kept going with the pitch, you know, it's going to be, you know, this much more if you call and have to have us come back out. And I go, I look, I appreciate it. I'm, we're, we're all good. And he goes, can I ask you a question? And I go, sure. And he goes, what's stopping you from doing this today? Oh, that's the like, man. Oh, He's going through the oh, Rolodex oh, of sales stuff. Oh, I said, you're. I don't like, look, I get sales is hard. I, I would not want to have your, I'm sure your boss expects you to meet some sort of quota. That's great. And I, and so he asked me, he goes, what's stopping you from doing it today? I go, just go, I'm going to stop you right there. Hard no. And he goes, and pause this, this long. He goes, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> it just gave me an okay, turned and walked away. And I'm like, again, old me would have done the same thing where I would have been like, I'm going to, I'll just keep going through this. And I'm like, look, Hard stop. This is a hard no. Like you yeah. got to get the fuck off my porch right now. It's yeah. it, it was. I hate that shit. I hate it. Yeah, I hate it hate too it. because you no time for you're, it. You, I, it. It was always bad. Like when you're on the streets of Chicago, someone was always selling you something. Mm. Whether it was some guy trying to hustle you, 
for yep. something or someone wants you to sign, sign some this sort petition. of goddamn yep. petition or yep. some fucking thing or whatever. It was just like, I want to be left alone. Right. Out here, when you want to, you come up to my fucking door and you ring my doorbell. There's even You're a sign <laughs> by the doorbell that says no soliciting, but these fuckers, right. they're like, I can't read, you know, and they just do it anyway. Like my rage oh, level. Sorry, I didn't see that. My rage level right. just shoots through the roof and I'm like, and Natalie, I, Natalie, God bless her heart. She just runs to the door. I'm like, don't open <laughs> that door because I'm checking the camera first. Because yeah, most of the yeah, time yeah. I'm like, I'm not even going to fucking answer that, you know, fuck that shit. What but, I need to, what I need to start doing, you know how I love to mess with people who. Oh, yeah text me or the like the spammers and the the, the mm-hmm. uh, robocalls and all that. If, if I get so, a salesperson on the phone, man, I will see, it's my goal in life to see how long I can keep on there. What I need to do is you and I need to come up with something that I can counter sell. When mm-hmm. I get a solicitor, if they're selling me something, I need to have something that I can pitch them on. Yes. So that's yours and your, you and me need to come up with something. That's a goal now. We need to come up with something that I can, I can pitch them. It's got to be can, like, I can, it's, yeah, I can it's got to be a, into a sales pitch. Yeah, right. If you're like, you want to buy this house? You know, like, <laughs> hey, actually, come on in while you're here. Let me show you the house. Let me see. Right. Are you interested? Are you in the market? Like, I, I could- look, your pest control, we are overrun. Yeah. Overrun with garden centipedes. They yeah. are, I've got up to here, right? Yeah. I wade through them. They're in my, up to my ankles when I walk downstairs. Yeah. Do you want the rough. house? You want the house? Come on in. Yeah. Like, what, what's your, what's your, uh, what's your, what's your, uh, what, what's your credit what's your rating looking like these days? You know, you got a good credit rating. What is yeah. it? You can tell me. That's cool. Cause here's the thing. It, you got to act today. Otherwise you're not going to get the best rate available for this. Like you're going to get, you know, I'm telling you, there's like 50 bucks off right now. If you, if you lock this house in today, you'll get $50, 50 off the closing price. Off. $50 <laughs> you, off. You know what I should sell them on? I should sell them on video services for the company. There there you go. You're like, oh my gosh. Hey, what? So would you guys, uh, we got a website or something. Do you guys have videos yeah. or anything like that? Cause I tell you what I do. I do video production. Like, what are you yeah. guys, like, what are you working with? Like, cause let me tell you the stats on today. Consumers love video. Like we're talking like 26% of people who watch a video <laughs> are that much likely to close. So you just start going to that pitch with him. Like exactly. Just yeah. Right back. Dude, at what's him. your social media engagement? Like how many click throughs do you get when you send out like marketing emails? Yeah. Is that, do you guys send out marketing emails? You really should. You know, if you put the word video in the subject line, you have a 22% more likely chance that they actually, what's open. your SEO game like? Cause I know a guy, you know, <laughs> I could, I could, we could, we could coordinate with you. Like he's yeah. a separate thing altogether, but like, Look, he's you, like, you know, if you can commit to a three month video package with me right now, I'll give you 25% off. The, the what do you guys cost. like? What's your podcast game like? Because I also do a podcast. Do you want, you, you know, you, I, I'm not lying, dude. The next solicitor I get, I'm 100% selling him on uh, audio video production services. That, that is, is amazing. That will be my I thing. I think that's will, the best will, way to to get them away because they deal with like the anger or whatever. It's like to to put the sales pitch on the salesperson. It's just right? like, oh. welcome to the Thunderdome, motherfucker. Like, I we're going into this. want someone now to come to the door because I am like that. I, I will, I just wish there was a way for me to see I, if I had a ring, I would 100% record that and we could post that on, we could post that on the thing. I just don't, I don't have uh, any way, but I will recount the story once it happens oh because God, yeah. the next time someone comes, that's happening. It's like, yeah, that, that's, that's the best way to do it. Like you'd be like, Oh, your pest services. I was actually looking for lawn services. I right. really want someone to mow my lawn. So yeah, I'm not in the, mo- not in the, not in the m- mode for that right now, but God, yeah, that, that just, everything about that just irks me. It just makes me want to scream okay. in their face. And I understand they're just trying to do their job, but I'm like, exactly. this I, is one of the most the, intrusive, yeah, like wastes of my time. Like I don't want to be bothered in my home. Leave me right. the fuck alone. My home is my sanctuary. Go mm-hmm. away. <laughs> right. I, and I have, again, like you have a, I don't have a sign up, but like you have a sign up. Mm-hmm. There should be zero, quite like respect the fucking sign. Yeah. Like if I don't have the, if there's, if you don't see a sign, get, I guess go for it. I've started to see some, some stuff in my algorithm now where it's like people dealing with solicitors. Like someone has, someone has like a a doormat that basically tells solicitors to fuck off. And they're like, they caught him on like the ring cam where he's coming up and he's like, he reads it. He goes, Oh, well, I was pretending to read that. And they rings the doorbell and they're like, fuck off. He's like, Oh, we're just, he goes, I know you read it. Get out of (laughs) here. And there was another one that put up a sign that said, if you're a solicitor and I come out, I'm going to charge you $50 a minute for, for talking to me. And they just like walk away. <laughs> I, see, these are all wonderful things that we can do. I love yeah. these. It's I just, I don't these. know, man. Like there's got, they're, they're doing it because obviously there's some sort of conversion on it. That's worth financially it, worth yes, it for them. But absolutely. like, 
I don't know, man. Yeah, uh, cred. You got to have guts, guts of steel, I guess. I don't know to to do this. Like, you got to have some thick skin to walk up to someone's yeah. front door, ring the doorbell, knock on the door, and be like, "Hey, I want to sell you something that you never asked for." <laughs> Just that cold pitch. I, that's it's that's miserable. The cold pitch is absolutely. Miserable. I will give that guy credit, man. He he hit all the rebuttals. You know what well, I mean? He, like he had his pattern down. Like I will. So whoever trained him did a wonderful job. Yeah, it was impressive. It's yeah. fucking impressive. Anyway, uh, so so listen, let us know. Viewers, I was going to say, <laughs> let us know what like what is your pet peeve? Doug's Doug had the uh, you know give me your number. I had the the door to door solicitor. What is something that just sets you guys off? And then also, how do you deal with it? Do you have a fun way that you counteract these people? Because right. I'm always looking for ways to mess with people. Yes. Justin's the king of that. Speaking of messing with people, uh, fucking Chick-fil-A is starting its own streaming service. Yeah. Let that one sink in for a second. <laughs> uh, I don't have a I'm looking for a chicken. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know what to say about that. This is the stupidest fucking idea. This well, is so I, stupid. I, you know, a part of me thought it was weird years ago when Amazon was going to open up its own production company, right? Sure. Like that was that was wild. Like, what are you doing? Apple, same thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, shit, when Amazon was going to do its own music, you know, and mm-hmm. stuff like that, I'm like, that's weird because you guys ship things, you know? Right. That's your primary job is to ship things. You used to be a bookstore. What happened? Yeah, like you've changed, you know. So I thought that was weird. I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird that they would start their own thing. But then if you look about at, at all the data they had, like Amazon oh, had so much data on people and psychographic information as far mm-hmm. as like what people are buying. I, I mean, I remember I had a uh, – to call him a professor as being generous. I had an egocentric <laughs> asshole uh, tell us that, um, you know, that Amazon was going to be the future of music moving forward because they have all that information about people's patterns, behaviors, and things like that. He goes, they're going to be able to, he goes, they should start their own label and they'll be able to just nail that stuff. Didn't exactly go that way, but they started with their production company. So it's just weird to me because like Amazon is like, you know, bookstore that becomes like this massive, like just distributor of things to then like creating, you know, content and whatever. And then you look at Chick-fil-A and I'm like, I don't associate Chick-fil-A with content. It's not you know? a, yeah. It, it, I don't feel like it's a tomato. Uh, you're, you're not comparing apples and oranges here or wait, you yeah. are. Comp- I don't know. It's not you're comparing chickens comparison. and turkeys here. You know what I mean? Thank like, you. You know, I to- completely lost what I was trying to say, but yes, it's not an even comparison. So apparently they're looking to create family friendly, mostly unscripted original shows. Don't know what that would look like, uh, but <laughs> apparently they have secured a game show from Glassman Media, creators of The Wall, and a 10 episode series by the talent company Sugar 23, whose CEO Michael Sugar produced the movie Spotlight and the show 13 Reasons Why. I'm like, uh, uh, okay. I mean,. Yeah. I, it's weird like to, to point, see the I, food industry being like, let's get into content, you know? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Like you said, like they, like Amazon's got the metrics behind it and like that, it, it makes sense that they can really tailor things and they've got that. I don't know what Chick-fil-A is looking to do. What's their end game here? Because as of the recent, the most recent data, Netflix and Disney are the only streamers right now that are actually turning a profit. That's a wild wonder. for Disney too, because that was a relatively recent endeavor. They mm-hmm. did. Oh, they've, like, they've, yeah, they look, they, they, they have Marvel and Star Wars. They, like there's, they got some tentpole fucking behemoth yeah. machines that they, they have to thank for that. But like, it, it's, it's not, it's not a great revenue model. Like it's like only two, only two of the endless amounts of streamers are actually turning profits right now. Like it, it, it's not, think about how many streamers are out there. Yeah. Like you've got, and then like you've got, you know, scalability. You're always going to have to try to get more people. You've got like, how much is this going to cost this, this streaming service? You, you, you want people to pay for another fucking streaming service? It just doesn't. Well, no, that this know, article man. goes this on to say, weird... it's like this, this is an incredibly competitive and flooded market. I mean, it's wildly competitive. So the idea that you're like, we're a food brand and we are Look. now going to enter the chat it's like it's not impossible but what are you offering that Warner discovery <laughs> is floundering 
Yeah. They are floundering right now. If yeah. I I believe the last time the last uh article that I read about it was I think their their stock had dra- it was up to twenty dollars or twenty something dollars a share. It's down to like seven under seven dollars now. Like there's just and they just lost the 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 NBA uh contract. So like <laughs> like they're like it like they're Warner <laughs> one of the first media companies out there, one of the oldest media companies is fucking floundering. And a fucking chicken shop thinks that they're going to create a, a viable streaming service. There's a niche for everything, right? Like you got Shutter, right? That's just the horror sure. app and things like that. And you have yeah. some of those things. So if they were to find Crunchy their Crunchyroll, and yeah, yeah, Crunchyroll, you know, the anime app and things like that. Like there's there's spots for it, but I I mean, you'd have to be real. You have to be really smart mm-hmm. to get people. Because Chick Fil A definitely one of the more popular, you know, fast food restaurants out there. Um, also, a bit uh, problematic in their views about religion and people that are uh, not straight. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you you're carrying that with you into this space as well. Um, I don't know, man. Like I, I would love to have been in that that meeting where someone was pitching this. And then what made people be like, you're right. Because listen, to some extent, <laughs> diversify, sure. But this is wildly different from you are a very successful <clears throat> fast food chicken chain. Like what makes you think that this is going to be the thing right. that makes this work? I don't people know, man. Love, people love your chicken. Like people are always just like Chick-fil-A. Usually people are just saying they they buy, buy and by and large blow the competition out of the water. Like they, yeah. are, they are the chicken fast food chicken shop to go to. So people do love the product, but I just, why? So l- let me ask you this, Doug. What's, if you were going to go in and you were going to pitch him a show, what would the show be that you would pitch him? Well, it's hard to think of anything other than like something that's like chicken related, which is like, that's like saying, yeah, I'm asking you for a suggestion from the crowd. They're like chicken. I'm like, all right, buck, buck, buck. I'm starting the scene. Buck, buck. I'm a chicken, you know, like, <laughs> but at it's the same time, fruit. Yeah, right. It's the low hanging fruit, and apparently they've done like they are actually creating, uh, you know, a short called entitled Rocky Road, and there's like a bunch of cows, like appears to be like driving around on a tractor, you know, and they also have a cow as kind of like their mascot that says "Eat more chicken," you know, on the right. billboards and stuff like that. So, um, you know, if, if you're talking family friendly stuff, that's fine. But I'm also like, I don't know, things that Amazon, you got to think of that all of these like streamers initially, like Netflix, you know, originally they're like, oh, we, you can just basically we'll send you DVDs and shit. And then they started streaming. They started making, making original content. The first thing they made was House of Cards, right? Right. They Followed had a landmark. The New Black. Fla- exactly. They had flagship you know, content that they're like, this yep. is our own content that we're making. HBO has had slews of, you know, stuff with their, their original series and things like that. Um, you know, you look at Amazon Prime, they have original stuff and they've also been able to invest in things like the Tolkien property. So they have the Rings of Power and, you know, all that other stuff that they do. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, and then you look at something like, I mean, because what could even Peacock do, right? Peacock, you know, they've got what the, the reruns of The Office and, fucking friends or whatever i don't know and then they try to do the original stuff but like people don't want to sign up for peacock either it, it, you know it's it's a struggle to get people to there's so many different streaming services all of them are subscription based and all of them have one show that you might be interested in you know like so like so the the ones that have started to kind of get these tentpole things those are the ones those are the big ones that people are gravitating to and it's and it's a race to the the top with those like five to six streamers everyone else is just praying for scraps like i know what i do or like shutter like they're going very very hyper niche and it's like Mm -hmm. look we're not doing anything but horror and Mm -hmm. because of that we're gonna like we you you know that we've got a lane and if you like this you can come you can come and 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 we've got all the horror you could possibly imagine the good the bad and everything in between so here's my pitch Oh, Here's my pitch for them. So did you see for a while that this was trending that I can't remember what it was. There was some South American country that uh, would air Star Wars, A New Hope, and they would very expertly intersperse beer ads in the movie without taking a break. No. Did you see this at all? No. It's fucking. It was fucking amazing. Like at one point when... Obi-Wan is like, you know, 
your father was a Jedi and he's like reaching into it. He goes, go ahead and reach into that trunk. And he opens up the trunk and he pulls out a lightsaber as it cuts to like a hand reaching into like a chest of like ice. And he, the hand grabs like a beer and like, it just shows the beer. Like it, it's, it's seamless. It's absolutely seamless. And they did this throughout. Cause they're like, we don't want to cut away. We're just going to insert this That's into brilliant. the movie. And eventually they got like cease and desist. So like, you can't sure. do that. Like you're, you're messing, but I would do the same thing. I would have Chick-fil-A play classic movies, but they would insert situations where people are grabbing like for a chicken sandwich or like right. waffle fries or whatever. And uh, it's sort of like whenever there's product placement, they just put Chick-fil-A in there and they're like, we're doing it. You know, we're doing it. <laughs> we're making it happen. Oh, you could think of some just horrible movies that to like if you're going old school like sophie's choice oh yeah or you know uh green mile uh, green it's mile. like what do you want for your last meal i want chick-fil-a you know <laughs> like that's the <laughs> problematic on many levels i mean yeah, yeah exactly it's just <laughs> oh my god that would be that would be br- look i would i would probably sign up for a month and just kind of check out what they were doing if that was the case they might get me on that one yeah, just whatever they do, they're just they're paying for licensing these movies and then getting the rights to just insert right. their own product placement. <laughs> I would I would pitch them an under so uh, uh, kind of like a uh, punked, like mm-hmm. a prank show because ah. again they're they're looking to do a lot of uh, non scripted stuff right so I would pitch them a prank show where they go into other fast food joints and prank the other fast food joints. Ooh, you know what? If they could get some like Wendy's level like that's funny right. bits out of it. Yeah. Like whoever runs Wendy's Twitter account, if they could poach them and that person can be the showrunner. Oh. <clears throat> then I think we've got something we could. Ooh, we that'd could, be good. Yeah. I'd, li- I'd like to see them do uh, like um, uh, drama where two Chick-fil-A workers of the same sex fall in love and kiss. That's what I think I'd like to see. That would why, That's what I'd pitch them. Pitch Belushi. Them. Was yeah. watching a lot of these uh, K-pop dramas uh, mm. or or, uh, or K. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, but the Korean. Of course, uh, he is. All all his whole Netflix thing is just like <laughs> Korean programming, and he said like and he said though like some of them are like wildly addicting. But that seems like like if they if they took that genre of storytelling, but then like put it into a drama for Chick Fil A, I mm-hmm. feel like again you could really hone in on like a niche audience. Yeah. It could be like, you know, a documentary about the exploitation of workers in the fast food industry. You know, I don't know. They, they got a lot of options, you know, they can go with. Exactly. My favorite reaction to this uh, from Twitter was uh, someone being like, when you try to watch Chick-fil-A content on Sundays and it's just like the multicolored bar, you know, <laughs> screen because the, t- yeah. the fa- founder's Christian and he uh, oftentimes Chick-fil-A is closed on Sundays because the founder observes the Sabbath. So the idea is like, uh, yeah, you can't see anything on Sundays because uh, they're at church. Not going to find it. I like I like this other one. It says they're going to get Seventh Heaven reruns on day one. <laughs> <laughs> like that's going to be the, the, the Peacock's got the office, you know, uh, fucking, you know, all these all these classic streaming show, uh, classic shows. Seventh Heaven. Find it right here. on Done. Chick-fil-A TV. One thing I can think of is like they just become like another Hallmark channel. That's no, going to be just, what it know. is. If they start doing, if they start doing scripted programming, that's gonna, that's absolutely what it's going to be. It's just funny to me because it'd be like Chick Fil A presents, <laughs> you know, just <laughs> you know, a very merry Christmas. It's like uh, okay, um, right. and then there's like if you're like, where's the Chick Fil A? If it's not in there, they're like, I don't fucking get this. I don't understand why they're doing this. Why are you doing this? How is this helping you? Yeah, how does how where is, is this helping anyone? How does this work? I don't understand. Where's your <laughs> where's your leg up on this? Um, and, and I guess also up on this. Yeah, right. I, I, fuck you. Apparently, uh, <laughs> companies like Starbucks and Coke, Coca Cola, have already kind of started doing this. Apparently, in June, Starbucks announced its Starbucks Studio to create content, which is just wild to me. Like, I don't like it. I just I do, we don't need it. I'm sorry, we just don't need it. And also, like, here's here's from the uh, the the um. What was it the press release from this from uh, Starbucks? Starbucks Studios advances our mission to nurture the limitless possibilities of human connection. What does that mean? Right. We're honored to have the opportunity to shine a light on the stories and people who inspire us, from young emerging artists to innovators, change makers, and others who are making a positive impact on the world. Get fucked. 
Storytelling is deeply ingrained in what Starbucks does. Really? Storytelling? Oh, yeah. When I think Starbucks, I think storytelling. And Starbucks Studios is a natural extension of these efforts. Together, we will harness the power of storytelling to foster connections, inspire change, and build a stronger sense of community. Get fucked. That, uh, don't buy it for a second. That is just nonsense. It, this is, I feel like this is like, I'm not opposed to new studios popping up and people creating content if if the intent behind it truly is storytelling. But Starbucks' mission is to sell coffee. That's yeah. that's it. Like Chick Fil A's mission is to sell chicken. That's it. Yeah. They're not. I'm sorry. They're just not. Like I, I, you could make the argument that you know, well, Apple's a technology company. There's, but they, you know, and they're doing a good job with storytelling. But I, I don't know. I this to me is like capitalism run amok just run wild like this is this is unchecked unbridled like we don't you're just trying to you're trying to uh what else can we do what can we expand to because if you don't grow the shareholders get pissy so this is like yeah this is them just trying to like some mad dash to to just bring in more revenue that's what i that's the that's the bottom line for all of that and it seems like ego like someone's like so I bet we could do this. I bet we could totally pull this off because this is who we are. We're storytellers at heart. It's like, listen, every corporation is going to have some sort of bullshit mission, vision, Uh and values. All right. Some are way better than others. Right. Um, The organization I work for, I believe in the stuff that they're pitching. At the end of the day, they're a corporation. I understand that. But when I see stuff like this, and I see Starbucks being like, we're about telling stories. We're about the, let me read that again because I hate it so much. Uh, You know, Advances our mission to nurture the limitless possibilities of human connection. Bitch, you fucking make coffee. You make overpriced coffee so that people can get their caffeine fix and move on. Don't let's not let's not dress up what this is. Like yeah. this is the stuff about corporations where we're 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 creating corporate poetry that says nothing. Like, really, that's what's behind you when you fucking get your coffee beans out and you grind them and you pour them over, pour some hot water through them. And then someone's like, I want this. And they're like, here you go. We are advancing our mission to nurture the limitless possibilities of the human connection. Get fucked. You're selling coffee. All right. And right. the cake pops. All right. That's what you're selling. Coming this fall, a pumpkin spice love story. Yeah. It's like, don't, don't, don't pitch that shit to me. Like, I, I don't know. And listen. Fucking Hollywood studios are no different. They're corporate entities in their own right, you know, as far as what they do. But their business is making content. They were you know? founded in. They were founded in that. They were founded. Fucking in MGM Studios that. isn't like you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into the grocery store industry because we have this real <laughs> right. big passion of telling the stories and connecting with humans on a level that's both financially responsible and also and also nutritious. Like no one, you know, like what, what are do- we doing here? I also think it's interesting because I'm sure a lot of these people think that because uh, they have such a loyal fan base for whatever their primary product is, they assume that those people are going to follow them over and like, oh, we're going to get millions of streams on whatever we put out there because we get ego. people who fucking love that's our product. And, ego. and that, to your point, I, I do agree with you now that that is ego driven because, look, people love your primary product. That does not mean, and I say this as a cautionary tale, that does not mean that they're going to follow you. There have been dozens of things that have failed in trying to do like a cross oh we're gonna we're gonna bleed out into this other thing and then they're like oh we did not see that was a huge misstep for us i just don't think that your audience is gonna there's too much there's too many things that people need to subscribe to. there are there are restaurants who had a primary thing that were like you know we're gonna do we're gonna add hot dogs to the menu you know and people are like what the fuck are you doing you're out of your lane and that's food related you know what I mean? Right. This is like a whole different industry. We're like, we're going to start making content. It's like, I don't know if anyone wants to see yeah. Chick-fil-A. Con- and I could be wrong. I'm trying to be more positive about things. Like, I, hey, listen, nothing ventured, never nothing gained. But I don't know, man. Like, when I, I just, I'm like, I'm, I'm not here for your content. You know what I mean? Like, right. there's too much content make, as it is. You make a damn if, good chicken sandwich. Eight years ago, if you're like, we're going to take a risk. We're going to get in this game. I'd sure. be like, this is still crazy, but it's early it's big, on. That's a big swing, but you might you right? might get ahead of the curve. You are way late to this fucking game. Right. What makes you think of all the things? And not only that, everything everything in the world has gone to a subscription base, and you're asking people to pay more for your Chick Fil A content. That is a huge ask. And in I'm theory, like, whatever you've got, it better be fucking awesome. In theory, because we, they, I mean, there, there's been no 
pricing structure or any any sort of model. Or How else they, are they going to pay for it? Well, that's what I don't know. Well, they made what do they say? They made twenty one billion dollars last year. You're I don't know. someone's footing the bill for this one way or the other. That's Here's what's going to happen. I'm just saying, like we don't know that they are charging for it. What a what a shift that would be if they figured out some way to do cheap, in, intriguing, like interactive type of content, and they gave it to you for free. That might be the that might be the play if they could figure out how to do it for, figure out how to uh, to produce it for low cost and and hand it out for free, subsidizing it elsewhere. If it's product placement in you know, in in show or whatever it is. That might be a play for them. And I'll say it this. It won't to be wrap for free, up. Justin. It's never for free. I'll say this. To, I'm just saying that's a pitch to them. That's another pitch. Figure that out. Talk to your financial advisors, Chick-fil-A. Figure out how you can do that. Um, I'll say this to kind of put a button on it. In, in To your point about trying to be more positive, if any of these new production studios are hiring, <laughs> I am available for work. <laughs> And I will 100% You guys doing podcasts? You want to be on our podcast? Tell us what you guys out. are doing. Hey, hop on Mind Gap Podcast. Let's talk about it, man. Turn turn, turn me around, man. Turn yeah. this ship around. I want to say one more thing. Listen, if I've learned anything in my 41 years of existence, it's when an organization, whether it be government or otherwise, goes, hey, guess what? We're going to cut you a deal here. They're going to fucking get you somewhere else. Like my, my brother's no talking about Missouri. He's like, they got rid of this tax. They got rid of it. Uh-huh. He goes, you know what? The, everyone's like, nice. He goes, you know what that means? They fuck us. They fuck us in so many other places. They're like, they got rid of this one particular ca- tax. Right. And then he goes, and then you go to the DMV and holy shit, does it cost so much money to get your license renewed? Right. Holy shit. Like all the other administrative <laughs> shit goes up because they're going to get their money. Yep. They're going to get, Absolutely. they wouldn't do this unless they want to get money. So if they say it's for free, then there's going to be ads up the ass because they're getting their fucking money for this. So they're not doing this out of the goodness of their heart. They want to make money. That's it. I rest my case. There you go. <laughs> All right. Let's do something fun now. <laughs> so we're trying know. to be more positive, right? <laughs> let's try to be more positive. Try to be more positive. It's hard. It's hard in these situations because I don't understand. And you'll always fear what you don't understand. Um, Okay, uh, we are going to be doing Guess That Movie based on the plot in five words or less. And Justin, oh. what? <laughs> I was like, what, what do we the forget? What do we do? I forgot the, the theme, theme song. song. Of course. Uh, Justin, yeah. uh, I've got three good ones here. Do you got three good ones? I got three ones that I think are going to make up for my poor showing last time. <laughs> yeah, let me, let, me, let, me, let me lower the bar. I've got three. You know, I've got three here. <laughs> Uh, I, I was I was more I'm more I'm more way more pleased because I as I wrote them I'm like okay can these be read as unbelievably uh, generic like my last one's good like <laughs> like soldiers save a guy yeah and <laughs> also because you don't want to give it away but also it also has to be like about the plot. That's right. the thing, right? Because there, if you're there's like, gotta oh, be, like the words yeah. mean something when you put like you're like, okay, exactly. these words were chosen specifically. So I, I, these, I'm hoping that you get these. All right, Justin, uh, why don't you give me one of yours first, and I will try okay. to guess it. Forgotten heroes thwart existential threat. Forgotten heroes. <laughs> Forgotten Heroes. I have this one movie in mind. I know it's not what it is. I okay. got to remember what it is. But you got to say it to get it out there. You got to purge it. It's it's not it. It's just a weird. Th- My brain goes. This is a weird reference. Um, fuck. What's it called? Um, <clears throat> it's uh, an older one or a newer one. It's it's it's. I think it's from the eighties, <clears throat> maybe early nineties. Only way I can think of it is I have to pull up Uma Thurman's IMDb. <laughs> She's not even that big of a role in it, but I just need to see the name of the film. Uh, well, she was a nymphomaniac. Didn't know that. Uh, where are we at here? Where are we at? 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 Come on now. Come on now. The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. <laughs> You know what? You're right. <laughs> I'm going to give you that one and all the other two also. <laughs> what have you ever heard of that film? The it's, it's, got, of- it's got a lot of people in it, man. It's got a lot of people. 
It's got John Neville. You've got Eric Idle. You know, you got you got Uma Thurman. Oh, you know? it was directed by Terry Gilliam. Yeah, I was like, yeah. based on this, I'm like, yeah, that looks like a okay. Robin Williams it. plays a plays a hot uh, character in it. You know, like Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, man. It's a uh, it's a uh, and when did this come out? And you saw this? Oh yeah, I remember right, seeing cool. it as a kid, being like, what the fuck is this? Like, it's a. <laughs> wild film and i saw it later in life i'm like okay i didn't understand what i was watching here yeah it came out in 88 anyway that's not what it is uh okay. release accolades reception what was the, did it get uh yeah it was, 90 percent on rotten tomatoes holy shit it's a wild wild movie i might uh, need to watch this film now it's wild all right basically this guy uh tells a story while they're getting attacked and he's like telling a story about all these heroes and people are, I don't know. So it's like, it's like you're seeing the story that this guy's telling and there's all these heroes that he summons and each of them have special abilities okay. and they save the day. Um, anyway, cool. um, forgotten heroes stop existential threat. Uh, forgotten heroes thwart existential threat. Thwart. They're thwarting it. Existential threat. Forgotten heroes. Uh, forgotten heroes. That's the one. That's really thwart, getting me. Thwart maybe. Don't don't worry. Don't worry about that. I just that's what I used. But that's fine. That uh, one's not as important. Forgotten man, heroes and existential threat. That's the big one. That's that seems, it seems like it could be so many things. So many things. I like the forgotten heroes because I feel like that's definitely something um, important. Uh, but nothing specific is coming to mind. Um, can you give me a hint? Oh man. Um, Without giving it away, all right. This this film, uh, I, I feel like anything I, I anything I realize I, I never ask for hints. Yeah, I never ask for hints. Yeah. Like, like I just it's give because up. you're so good at this game. No, because um, I just give up. <laughs> the, uh, man, anyone I give you, uh, bah, 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 bah. I don't know what to. I don't know what I could say that wouldn't give it away. Um, mm. I'll, I'll say this. Um, this movie has uh, this movie. The cast in this movie is stacked. No, that's helpful. Thank you, Justin. Oh, wow. oh, and then I just name it. <laughs> yep. The uh, uh, <laughs> you, when you when I tell you what it is, you'll understand why it's so hard to give. Oh, I, I have no doubt. Um, I have no doubt. When did it come out? This year. This year? Yes. Came out in twenty twenty four. Is it Deadpool and Wolverine? If you haven't seen it yet, folks, go see it. <laughs> You could be like, you know, fucking Channing Tatum's in it, you know? Like, <laughs> I, You know, I could have picked someone. I was going to say it's yeah. got a lot of cameos. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. Thank you. I understand you're like, uh, yeah. it, that was definitely generic enough. I'm like, it's some sort of superhero flick probably, but I'm like, I don't know. Well, like, Forgotten Heroes I thought was going to be the one because, you know, it was yeah. all the all the ones that were uh, that were that were lost to the void. So. Sure, sure, sure. Um, well, that was good. Yeah. Maybe. That, I don't know. Maybe that was still a little too. And then. The write-up for Deadpool Wolverine actually says that they they uh, they stop an existential threat. So it's true. I they do it out of there and hoping that that would be you know, hundred percent accurate. So. Everything you said, well done, very good. All right, all right, Justin, here we go. You ready? Yes. Intense salesman selling real estate. Oh, that is Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. Hard stop. Fuck yeah, baby. I love got that it. Fucking film. I love that film. I knew you were gonna get that one. Yeah, I was like, how, how, I was like, how do I describe this? Yeah, it's just intense salesman selling real estate. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Have you, have you have you seen it or not? Yeah, okay, I own yeah. It. Like, and I only learned about it because of you because you showed me that scene where Al Pacino just rips into uh, oh Kevin Spacey. Yeah, Kevin Spacey, yeah. and you're like, this is an amazing scene, and I'm like, whoa, this yeah. is this is wild. There's some great acting in that movie. <laughs> There's some fantastic, and I love the fact that they stage it like a play. Like there's 100%. Like, like four or five sets and that's it. And that's they all it. move around yeah. the set like you would have played. It's really well. Yeah. If you haven't yeah, seen that one, go watch that one too. You've all heard of Alec Baldwin's cameo in that film and the whole yep. spiel he does with always be closing and whatever. Oh, like it's, so it's wild. It's a huge, huge thing. Uh, yeah. First but it's prize, funny because you and I looked into that and then. Yeah. And Second then prize, set of steak knives. Third prize, you're fired. You're fired. Um, we we were like you're showing me about this, and then we found clips of where Al Pacino, John C. McGinley, and some other guys perform this in, as yeah. a play, but they swapped roles. Yes, yes, yes. And I hated it because I'm like <laughs> Al Pacino is yeah. Roman. 
He can't be playing the guy who's the weak guy who's trying to find leads yeah. and no, no, no. He is Roman who just rips ass and just like, yeah, no, no, yeah. I, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. I was like, no, John C. McGinley also would play a great Roman, but Al Pacino is Roman. Anyway, right. Okay. I digress. <laughs> what? You fucking child. <laughs> you who fucking... told you you could play with men? <laughs> you can't. I'll pull that for a clip and just just for an audio clip, you'll be like, I know what this is. Yep. You fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the way he says it. It's like he's got a mouthful of like crackers. You cunt. <laughs> yeah, you fucking cunt. <laughs> uh, All right. What's your next one? I, I, I'm just going through lines in my head on this one now. I need to go watch that movie. I might throw that on tonight. It's such a fucking good movie. So um, good. All right. Uh, teenagers' emotions run amok. Oh, this is uh, turning red. It easily could be that, but that's not the one I was thinking of. I win. You know, no, I'm right. I'm right. You know I'm right. Yay! Inside you Out 2. That's correct. <laughs> you got it. Woo! Woo! Yeah. I was going to say preteens emotions run amok, and that could be Inside Out. Yeah, right. Either one. I was yep. like, all three of those. We got it. Uh, okay. Uh, kids look for a body. Stand by me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't know many other movies where kids are just looking for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I feel like that's a real like pretty that's uh, that movie. Like, hey man, if anything, we're doing we're doing everyone a solid of like, what's this movie about? Ah, <laughs> oh, kids look for a body. You know. <laughs> what about Glenn Gray, Glenn Ross? That's a weird name. Uh, intense salesmen sell real estate. Like, yeah, yeah right, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's right. a pretty straightforward movie. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. Uh, I feel like uh, st- that that's got the corner on the kids looking for a dead body mark. <laughs> yeah, I don't like. Still, I don't yeah. know if there's too many. You know, there's other <laughs> ones where it's like maybe it could be this. It's like no, that's like the crux of what these kids are trying to do. It's trying to find a body. Originally, the story was called The Body. You know, before it was called Stand by Me. So, like, you know, there you go. <laughs> All right, hit me with your last one. That guy's dead. (laughs) It's like, he's dead. The kids are finding it, you know? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) All right, here we go. Last one. Homeowner finds the meaning. One, two, three, four. Ah, crap. Sorry. uh, I'm going to take out the word the. (laughs) Homeowner. I was like, that looks like too many. Homeowner finds meaning of life. Homeowner. Finds meaning of home alone. Home alone. Are you so you're saying the mom found the meaning of life because she realized that she neglected her child? Yeah, sure. That or the burglars find the meaning of life, even though they're you not really what? homeowners, you know. But they're like, <laughs> I shouldn't steal, but they don't learn it. They still go back to it in home home alone too. But anyway, right. homeowner finds the meaning of life. Homeowner, homeowner, homeowner. Secret life of Walter Mitty. No. Haven't seen the movie, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. Also, I would strongly recommend that movie. That truly, uh-huh. truly is a good movie. I remember you liked that one a lot. Uh, who else is a homeowner uh, that finds the meaning of life? This one I know you've seen without a doubt. Doubt it. Doubt it. I don't think it's true. Okay. I don't think it's true. Die hard. <laughs> <laughs> Die harder. Uh, Die with a Vengeance. Uh, uh, let's see here. One of them. Uh, no, no, no. Good day to die hard. Homeowner. I don't... <laughs> a good day to die hard. Um, homeowner, homeowner, homeowner. <clears throat> Finds the meaning of life. Um, nothing Let me know if you want a hint. Mind. Yeah, give me a hint. Okay, this movie came out in 2005. Hmm. I don't know, man. Can you give me another one? You recently watched this movie. Fuck me. <laughs> because you recommended it. Fuck me. <clears throat> I didn't write down what I One of the actors today. who played in the movie is now dead. Does that help? <laughs> Bill Paxton's dead? <laughs> Um, Twister. <clears throat> Twisters. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else could I say? Um, the Boys, season four. <laughs> uh, I'll just say uh, 47 
plays a key component. I'm, I got oh, sorry, 42. Made. 42 plays a key component. <laughs> my, my apologies. Oh, no! The numbers! 42 plays a key component. One might say that the homeowner found 42. Uh, Air Force One. Get off my plane. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drawing a blank, man. I got nothing. Okay. This is the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. He does find the meaning of life. Yeah. And it starts off with him trying to save his home. That's right. It's true. He is a homeowner. That's yep. very, very, very true. I'm just saying. You're, and you are absolutely correct. I, I thought the meaning recently. of life would be, because that's a key. It that's should have. For some reason, I got another movie there. stuck in my head and Which I couldn't get it you? out. Which it was like, I, th- I feel like there was one. Because this happens to me all the time where you get you get that one thing in your head. Was there one where like Bill Murray was a crotchety neighbor? And some kid, or was it Will Ferrell? Oh, was, yes, it was St. Vincent. Yeah, for some reason that was in my head. And I knew was that it wasn't Saint it. Vincent? I haven't even seen it, but uh, I was like, I'm, I was almost positive. Yeah, St. Vincent was 04. Yeah, so. Yeah. Struggling yeah. woman moves to Brooklyn with her 12 year old son, having to work very long hours. She has no choice but to leave Oliver in the care of Vincent, a body misanthrope next door. Yeah. yeah. Well, now you'll know if I ever do that one. There you go. Yeah. B- body boy. All right, Doug, what's the last one you got for me? All right, many people die over jewelry. Many people die over jewelry. (laughs) Yeah. Many people die over jewelry. Many people die over jewelry. Many people die over jewelry. Uh, It's got to be the Avengers Infinity War. Oh, that's a great one, but no. All right, damn. Those damn. are gems. Those are gems. They're not Fair. jewelry. Fair. Um, over jewelry. Okay. So, not taking it at true face value. Like what? Something about like maybe like the crown, like a, a European or a Roman. So that the Roman Empire. I think about that too often. Uh, uh, what year did this movie come out Uh, which one the one you're talking about I know there's a there's a couple oh no it's a series of movies a franchise Mm mm-hmm the last one came out in 2003 franchise that ended in 03 (laughs) Oh boy. Oh boy. And a lot of people died. <whistles> Who directed it? I can't tell you that. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Got it. Can't tell you that. You'll be Fair like, enough. Ah! Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, it's not Titanic. I know that because there wasn't. There I will wasn't say the franchise. the franchise bit is a little, has an asterisk next to it because there have been spinoffs. Oh, okay. Got it. Um, hmm. But this series particularly ended in 2000. Was it The Mummy? It wasn't The Mummy. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, man. Is there anything else you can give me? This won a shitload of awards. Shit. Won a shitload of awards. Uh, spinoffs 03. Over a lot of people died over jewelry. A lot of people died over jewelry. I feel like it can't be the Saw franchise because that. <laughs> it's not the Saw franchise, no. Because I think there's a locket in one of those movies. <laughs> you watched all of these movies with me. Uh, oh, oh! Is it Lord of the Rings? It is Lord of the Rings. Oh, yes. Oh, all right. All right. All right. I see. I was like, it. All right. I was like, I couldn't say Peter Jackson. No, that that's, would, uh, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yep. Yeah. Many accurate. people die over jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a very, that's a very accurate portrayal of the film. <laughs> it's fun to oversimplify these sometimes, too. It really it's like, is. What bad. happens in Lord of the Rings? Well, a lot of people die over, I was like, over a ring, you know? Right. <laughs> over, yeah, literally over a ring. Yeah. Uh, over that's a ring. That's fun. Good job, Justin. Those were good. Good job, Doug. All right, Justin, what do you got to recommend this week? 
I am going to recommend, I watched this a few weeks ago. Uh, it's been sitting on my list. Beverly, Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F. It's the new Beverly Hills Cop that uh, is on Netflix. Um, came out uh, a couple months ago. It's not, I'll say this, it's not one of those movies that you're going to be like, this deserves a litany of awards. Mm -hmm. But I will say they did an incredible job capturing the uh, tone of a late 1980s action comedy. Like this, mm -hmm. this, this has the same DNA as the original Axel Foley movies. It's over the top would never, it's not, it's not plausible in any way, shape or form. Like these people would be under, like they would just be under litigation, like mm -hmm. the rest of their lives for what they did. Um, but it is, it is, if you were a fan of the first, at least two, the third one we don't speak of, but the first two, uh, you'll, you'll like this one. I, I really am surprised at how well they did at bringing back that vibe of the first two Beverly Hills Cops. So nice. Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F. If you're looking for just a mindless action comedy, it's really good. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. What do you got, Dougie? I'm going to recommend this fucking book right here. Oh, here we go. Preppy Kitchen. Mm. Super easy. By John Cannell. You may know him from his YouTube channel, Preppy Kitchen. Uh, I actually got to meet him this past weekend. And boy, what a fucking delight that guy <laughs> is. He's so cool. So nice. And uh, I've enjoyed his channel for a long time. He cooks really fun stuff. He does some savory, but he's really known for his sweet stuff. And uh, there's some banger recipes in here, including one that I've tried, which is uh, a biscuit loaf. Have you ever been eating a loaf of bread and be like, man, I wish this was a biscuit? Well, good news. That recipe's in this book. <laughs> and I made it. And you're like, this is fucking a loaf of bread, but it's a biscuit. And with some homemade honey butter, it's fucking just the best. Yeah, also that made sounds incredible. Basically blueberry cornbread, which was amazing. And there's a whole shitload of other stuff in here that I can't wait to try. I'm so excited. Yeah. So... His book's out now. I highly recommend it. It's also designed to be as simplified, streamlined as possible to make good food and like prep easy and all that sort of stuff. And it's so far, it's worked out great. So I highly recommend it. And I highly recommend his channel as well, Preppy Kitchen. If you're looking for just some good stuff to learn how to cook some really great, fun stuff, highly recommend it. So do it. Do it now. Get his do book. It. Support him. All that good stuff. Support us too. YouTube.com slash podcast. Like, subscribe. Links in the description for our Discord, for our Patreon, for our merch. And be sure to follow us on all our social medias at Podcast, And follow Justin as well. On Instagram at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm, if you prefer to listen to a podcast or consume podcasts via the audio version, anywhere you can do that, you can find us. So go ahead and share, subscribe, rate, review, like whatever you can do on there, please do it. And the big one is sharing. Let people know that we exist because it's the only way that we're going to grow and be able to do more cool shit. And then twoeastaith.com, twoeastaith on all social media, loveitimprovfilm.com, loveitimprovfilm on Instagram. Booyah. And with that, I'll say, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners, viewers, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.